What is up guys, in this video we're gonna be talking about fatigue management, AKA making room to grow the muscles and also recovery. So let's get on into it. What is up guys, Coach Joe here at the Lion's Den located in Colmar, PA. First off, if you're new to the channel, make sure you hit the like button, subscribe. We got tons of awesome videos coming out. But in this video, I am currently actually on a low stress or deload week, which we'll talk about later in the video. Uh, and I have my training partners. I got Coach Tani and then I got Big Monster DK in the house. And uh, we're just gonna talk about some tips that have helped us with fatigue management to maximize the most amount of muscle growth possible while also some of our recovery modalities. So let's dive right on into it and enjoy some training footage. All right, so basically when we're training, okay, we're accumulating lots of volume and putting stress on the body. We're actually breaking the body down. And as we continue to do this, okay, we're just putting systemic fatigue on ourselves. So it's very difficult to keep training hard and hard over and over and over and over again. And eventually the body's gonna break. So fatigue management is huge for you to be able to keep training for a long period of time, but then also know when to ease up on the gas a little bit and give your body some time to recover. So that's kind of what we're gonna be talking about in this video, It just give you guys some tips and tricks to help you uh, with recovery, starting off with the basics, and then we'll get into some uh, tips on programming, on how we manage our fatigue with our programming so that we can train longer, we can train harder, we can recover better, and get as maximal gains as possible. Is maximal a word? Is it a word? Fact check? Maximal? Ma maximum? Maximum. Yeah. Maximum. All right, so common question before we dive into this is how do you know you're fatigued or are you just being a little bitch? Well, I'm gonna tell you how you know the difference. Systemic fatigue, honestly, you're coming into your training sessions and maybe you have an off day and that's normal, okay? Then you gotta suck it up, you gotta train hard. However, if you notice that every single training session you're just feeling overall fatigued and your performance is starting to go down that's when you know something's probably up okay so if you're looking at your program and you're sticking to the program right hitting your sets your reps etc and things are going good for a while but then all of a sudden you notice the plateau which is okay but then you start to see that dip in performance okay and it's not just a day it's not just two days it's like a week two weeks something's got to change that's when you've accumulated too much of that stress and that fatigue and like i said in the the previous we have to ease up on that gas pedal so those are, are some signs and some symptoms okay maybe you're feeling just run down in general your mood you're you're just kind of irritable Ew, stay away from that stuff so that's what's happening uh and then we got to just make some adjustments to better our training so that we can get as most gains as possible. What is up guys? We got Coach T in the house. What's up Coach T? Hey guys, how's it going? So Coach T has recently been doing a hypertrophy program with myself and DK. She's down 20 freaking pounds. Yes. Hit him with a flex. Let's see the gun show. Oh my word, what are those? <laughs> so basically talking about fatigue management, what are some of the staples that people need to have uh, before they get too complicated with things? Like what's something that stands out right away in your mind? All right, for me, mom of three kids, rest is huge. Getting my sleep in um, anywhere from seven to eight hours to make sure that my body is rested and recovered in order to really maximize the most in my training sessions. Because when you're sleeping, that is when the growth actually happens. A lot of people think when exactly. you're training, but it's really breaking down the muscle when we rest and recover us when the muscle builds. Yes, exactly. And then there's this creature lurking in the corner. What is your name, sir? DK, AKA Frankenstein. Oh, who gave you that name? Uh, the doctor himself. <laughs> What's this doctor prescribing you these days, huh? Uh, a lot of volume work and a lot of proper nutrition. Nice. So uh, in regards to sleep, how many hours of sleep do you try to get? Uh, well, so it's harder for me to get the whole prescribed eight hours because I work third shift. So I get around six to seven, but that for me works because my training, I train right after work in the morning. So I'll work 10 to seven, go to the gym right away and train. So that way I find myself training better early in the morning, even though it's later in the day for me in my, in my uh, I guess, cycle. But yes, yeah, sleep, sleep was the main thing for me throughout this whole cut. And then let's talk about nutrition a little bit. So obviously we're trying to cut right now. So in this, uh, for the perspective of trying to lose weight during this, what are some key nutritional components that you're trying to get in uh, throughout this cut to help you manage your fatigue and recover as best as possible? Uh, lean, 
nutrient dense foods. And the biggest thing that I took away from this whole proper nutrition with this cut was, uh, I guess it would be macro timing or nutrition timing and timing the proper amount of carbs pre-training and post-training. And that would, those two meals itself takes up about two thirds of my carbs throughout the day. And that, I noticed a huge difference with that in the first week of training alone. Nice. And then tell them uh, how much weight you started at and where you're at now. Uh, and April 28th, I started at 315. And this morning, July 24th, I weighed 274. Wow. wow. When's the last time you were 274? 10th uh, grade of high school. Oh my gosh, it's amazing. Coach T, give us some other key pointers piggybacking off of what DK said uh, for nutrition. Okay, guys, so for me as a woman, um, getting my protein in is always a huge struggle. So you wanna kind of roughly think about a gram per body weight is where you should be at. I know for me, if I didn't have a protein shake, it would be hard for me to actually consume all the protein I need by eating just because it like you get full and digestion. So for me, protein shakes have really helped to keep my protein high. Um, and really um, doing most of those carbs pre and post training um, to kind of really fuel your body. And also keeping your fats at a minimum um, pre and post training as well. All right, so now we're getting to the programming variables when it comes to managing fatigue. And the first thing that stands out in my mind is gonna be some sort of low stress or deload period in the training. So we've accumulated a lot of fatigue uh, and then what we need to do is let the body recover. So this week for me has been a low stress or deload week. And basically what we're doing is we build up tons and tons of volume. We fatigue the body a lot. We start to get maybe that decrease in performance or that systemic fatigue. And then we have to ease off. And that ease off is gonna be about a week. Could be a little bit longer. You're gonna to have to figure that out for yourself. I've made videos about this before, so you can just click up here to get a little bit more in depth on this topic. Uh, but what we wanna do is just reduce the volume, okay? And sometimes the intensity, it depends. There's a difference between a deload and a low stress, um, but that is kind of what's letting the body recover. So DK, tell them about your training, how it gets harder progressively each week. Uh, and then typically what you do on a deload or a low stress, um, and kind of how your body feels maybe as you know you're getting fatigued and then as you're recovering. So typically like the first, with this whole hypertrophy training, the first two weeks, every set of every workout, like every set of extra, every exercise generally feels good. And then towards the end of the week three, right around the start of week four, I can kind of tell because the first main movement of the day will feel good, higher weight, hitting around the same reps as the week before because the RIR or RPE, uh, whichever way you want to word it, was one more than the previous week. But as the workout goes on, the exercises or the accessories, they'll start to fatigue sooner than they did the previous week or I won't be able to do as much weight or I'll have to do less weight than the previous week. So that's how I can tell generally that it's about time for a deload. So kind of piggybacking off what he said, which was awesome, is he brought up RPE and RIR. So that is just how we auto-regulate our programming. If you don't have some sort of auto-regulation, I would highly, highly suggest that you either have your coach program that in for you or you take that into your hands. And auto-regulation is just a way for you to manage stress and fatigue properly. So you have RPE, so rate of perceived exertion, and then you have RIR, reps in reserve. So just like DK had said, you know, if you're sticking to, let's just say percentages, right? And you come in and you have to hit 10 reps at 75%, but you're not feeling that great. Then you're technically going off program because you are pushing harder than the program is saying to, which is gonna put more stress and more fatigue on. So when we have RIR and we have RPE, that's gonna help uh, with those days by taking advantage of great days and also scaling back on days that are not so great uh, and that's going to allow us to train for longer periods of time and also track uh, the stress that we're putting on our body so if we start to see uh, that the reps and reserve is going down okay and our fatigue and stress is, is kind of going up uh, then we know it's going to be time for us to 
get that deload or that low stress weekend. So we, we found that it would probably be a helpful disclaimer that the, the, the whole thing you have to make sure you're doing is actually training hard to begin with. And I think a lot of people miss that concept. They're not training hard and then they think that they need a rest period when they actually don't, okay? So the only way to get bigger and stronger and make gains is to train freaking hard. So a very simple way to do this is throughout your programming, and we'll do a program video in the future, it's gonna be on week one, say you have 10 reps and you have to have RIR, uh, three reps left in the tank. So three reps left in reserve. You do that for a week. The next week, you wanna bring it to two RIR and then one RIR, and then the last week, zero RIR. You got nothing left, and that is gonna show you that you're progressively increasing the stress, so you know you're training harder, okay? You got nothing left in the tank. The body is, is, is near maximal efforts, and then you throw the low stress weekend. And everybody's gonna be a little bit different. It may not be four weeks. There's been times when we get to four weeks, right? And we're like, all right, we got six weeks or eight weeks before we need to throw in a low stress or a deload week. Uh, but that's super necessary. So once you figure out and you're getting those symptoms of you know just overall fatigue, systemic fatigue, uh, you're decreasing performance, you gotta throw that in there. And that's just going to let the body recover, right? And then we go back from the start and we hit it again and just get after it. So hopefully that helped you guys out with your recovery, fatigue management, et cetera. Take some of these tips, throw it into your programming. Uh, but like I said in the beginning of the video, make sure you subscribe. I really appreciate your guys' support and Stay up to date with all the videos that are coming out. So stay a lean, mean, strength machine. I'll catch up with you guys next time. Peace. This is what training hard looks like, right, Coach Tanya? That's right. Important things in life. What do you got going on? <laughs> oh my gosh, the secret training program.